What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we are going to make a giant reclaimed beam console table out of these walnut beams. So this is kind of what it'll look like, only that top beam will set down in the middle. These pieces are about five million pounds each, so I can't hold the one up there to show you, but you get the idea. So the first thing that I wanted to do was to run each of these pieces across the joiner. This was a little bit challenging because of how big the pieces were and how heavy they were. And I was really only running them across the joiner to kind of smooth out the surface a little bit. I didn't necessarily need these to be perfectly square. I just wanted to get all of the main rough parts out with the joiner and then I sanded them down a little bit better. So to cross cut these to length, I wanted to use my miter saw, but the miter saw was not high enough right where it went down. So I had to put a backer board in there and use my miter saw kind of as a radial arm saw to begin the cut. And then after I had that first part cut, I could actually use the miter saw as a miter saw to cut down on that. I was only able to get down about halfway through the beam, so I would have to flip it over in order to finish the cut. So I figured that if I just flip this beam completely over, that the sides probably wouldn't line up and the cut would be off. That'd be okay, because I'm gonna use the angle grinder later to sand everything out, but I wanted to get the cut as good as I could. So I marked where the cut was on each side, and then I flipped the beam over on the other side and lined those pieces up, and then I cut down on that line. This ended up working pretty well, and the cuts lined up really closely after I had them through on each side. So the two leg pieces were cut to the same length, which was somewhere around 30 inches long. And then the middle piece beam I just left as long as possible. Everything here is an eight by eight, so it came out somewhere about six and a half feet long by 30 inches high altogether. To assemble these pieces together, I'm using dominoes here. Now this could have been done with just cutting a giant tenon or a dovetail joint out of the beam itself. Figured that would be pretty complicated and I didn't want to mess that up because this was all the material that I had to use. So dominoes would be the simplest and the fastest way for me to do this. So I put three in a row and then I turned the dominoes sideways and put another one on the other angle to keep everything kind of lined up. And I'm using the biggest dominoes that Festool makes. So these are the 14 millimeter by 140 millimeter. So I figured that four of these on each end should be strong enough to hold these beams together. It's not every day in woodworking that you get to hit something pretty hard with a sledgehammer, so I enjoyed this part. And really using the sledgehammer was the only way that I could get these to go together. You can see here I'm using the smaller rubber mallet and that did a little bit of work, but anytime you get a chance to use a sledgehammer on something that actually makes sense, definitely take the chance to do that. Because sometimes it's just necessary and this video proves that. To put the other end on, I just leaned everything up and then very carefully put this together. Probably should have laid this down on my workbench. Once again, I got the big sledgehammer out and tapped it into place. Ended up working just fine. This piece was super heavy and that shot was actually really difficult to get. So if you haven't already liked this video or dropped a comment below, now would be a perfect time to do that on the account that I didn't drop the giant walnut beam when I was trying to put it together. Keep these things in place, I just grabbed my giant 10 foot pipe clamps and I clamped them down pretty well as hard as I could and let them dry overnight. So this shot here where I'm dragging this thing out, this is the next day after everything was dry. And then it was time to get busy with the angle grinder. So I want this beam to look kind of distressed and a little bit on the rough side to really capture that reclaimed timber look. And basically what I'm doing with the angle grinder is kind of trying to carve out a little bit of that rough profile rather than sanding everything down smoothly. So I'm using a sanding disc attachment, which in my opinion works really well and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to carve down into the beam. And I've seen where they make chainsaw head attachments and kind of some spiky bit attachments for the angle grinder. I've read some pretty bad reviews about those and they can be pretty dangerous if you would get some kickback or the blade on one of those would happen to catch whatever you're working on. So I like this sanding disc. It does work really well. It might take a little bit longer, but it's a much safer option in my opinion. 
Also, if you ever do decide to use an angle grinder, definitely wear a mask. You can see why, and I would highly recommend doing this outside unless you want all that sawdust in your shop or your house or wherever you're working. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the sanding process here, but basically what I'm doing is just going back over this gently with I think 120 grit sandpaper to get all of those rough spots out. The angle grinder gives this beam a ton of character, but it does leave some overly rough spots and a couple sharp edges, so I just went back and knocked all those out with the sander. The last step in this beam build was to put the finish on it. So I'm using Rubio Monocoat Pure Finish here. And I don't have a whole lot to say. I think the finish and what you're seeing here really speaks for itself. The Pure looks absolutely awesome on Walnut and it really brings out that dark, super rich collar. Also with Rubio, it really is a one coat unless you want to add some sheen with the maintenance oil. It's a really easy product to use and you don't have to worry about leaving any hard marks because all of the oil finish blends in perfectly. You do want to let the oil set for maybe 15 minutes or so and then go back over it and buff any of the excess out. I'm just using a cheap car buffer here. They make better products, but this seems to work fine. So when that Rubio was dry a couple days later, everything would be finished up. Here's a couple pictures of the finished product. And the pictures you're seeing here are of a second smaller beam table. The reason for that being because that first beam table was so big that I couldn't get it inside by myself. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.